the daily office is the standard Anglican prayer. It's the staple of our devotion. If, for instance, the Roman Catholics have the rosary as their quintessential prayer, the daily office is the quintessential prayer of Anglicans. And in the Book of Common Prayer, the composition of every other service is done with the assumption that the daily office will be said twice a day, every day of the year. So what is the daily office? It's a devotional exercise that involves confessing our sins to God, praising God, praying to God, and reading scripture. And altogether, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to complete. So the office essentially groups together all of the main duties of a Christian, praising God, confessing sins, praying to God, and reading scripture. All of them are grouped into this one service. This means, for instance, that when Anglicans pray, we do it in the context of reading scripture. And when we read scripture, we do it in the context of prayer. So everything sort of comes together really nicely. Now, Anglicanism is a liturgical tradition, and that includes the daily office. So everything that we do in the daily office, everything that we say is actually prescribed and set by a written service that is found in our prayer book. So we're not actually praying to God ad lib. We're not saying whatever comes to our mind. Everything that we're saying is set in that written service in the prayer book. There is one part of the daily office where it says that you can, if you want to, pray to God now in your own words. But other than that part, everything else you are reading from what is being written. That also includes scripture. When we read scripture during the daily office, we're not reading scripture however we want to. It is traditionally done based on what we call a lectionary, but that's going to come later. Now, the daily office was originally intended to be performed as a group. This is back in the day when people actually went to church every single day. Nowadays, when we do the daily office, it's usually going to be alone. However, in the daily office, the language is always going to be in the plural. So for instance, we don't say, I confess my sins. We say, we confess our sins, even if you're by yourself. Now, that still makes sense if you're alone, because in Anglicanism, our theology is that all prayer is a corporate communal event. You are never actually praying to God as an individual. You're never praying to God as an isolated little atom. You're always praying to God as one part of the church, the collective body of Christ. When you pray to the Father, you're praying to him in the Spirit as part of the body of his Son. It's always going to involve other people. When we pray to God, we're praying to him because the Spirit has enabled us to believe in him, and the Spirit has also adopted us into the Father's Son. So we're praying to the Father as his son. And since we're in his son, we're in his body, which is the collective church. We're always praying to God as one part of the bigger worldwide Catholic church. So that's why even if you're alone, it still makes sense to keep saying things in the plural. So that essentially covers what the daily office is. Now, later on, I'm intending to make a video that will actually go through the daily office service as a commentary, like I did with the Eucharist uh, liturgy. And we're going to look at the historical context, what the whole thing means, the theology that permeates it. We're going to see that the daily office expresses the doctrine of justification by faith alone, for instance. But that will be for another video. For now, that's the gist of the daily office. It is one service that we say every morning and every evening that takes reading scripture, confessing our sins, uh, praising God, and praying to God, and it combines them into this one service. You can say it by yourself, or you can say it with other people. Now, with the daily office, there are actually two different services. There's one for the morning, and there's one for the evening. In the Book of Common Prayer, these are called morning prayer and evening prayer. These two services are mostly exactly the same. However, there are some minor differences between them. For instance, they have different what we call songs. These are different passages from scripture or from the tradition that we say is a song of praise to God. And also at the end of them, they do have some different prayers as well. However, like I said, most of the service is identical in both. 
Now for this video, as we go through the daily office, we are going to go through the morning prayer service. So let's now get into how to actually do the daily office. First of all, what complicates this a little bit is that every single province of the Anglican Church has its own daily office in its own prayer book. So for instance, here in New Zealand, the mainstream Anglican Church in New Zealand has its own prayer book. And in this prayer book is a, the daily office. But the daily office that's found in this prayer book is very different to the daily office that's found in the prayer book of, for instance, the Church of England. So that's why it's a little bit complicated. Now, I know that most of my listeners are actually from America. So what I've done is linked in the description below of this video is a link to the daily office that's in the prayer book of what's called the Anglican Church of North America, or the ACNA. And in case you're wondering, if I lived in America, that would be the church I'd join. And so if you, if you are an American, you're thinking about this, yeah, give that a look. However, what this video is going to be talking about is the 1662 Daily Office, because regular listeners will know that on this channel, we love the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. So this is the standard daily office. Every single daily office that you'll find throughout Anglicanism will be based on the daily office found in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. Now, first of all, if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, I would recommend this edition. This is what's called the International Edition, published by IVP. The link for it is in the description below. This is a great little book. So that's what I'd recommend. It's pretty cheap as well. Okay. However, if you don't have a prayer book, a physical prayer book, what are you going to do? How are you going to do the daily office? Well, what I've done is, in anticipation of this video, I have taken the 1662 daily office and put it in a PDF. It's an A5 booklet that you can print out at your leisure, or you can just download it and have it on your phone. What I've done, though, is I've got two versions of it. We have the traditional old language 1662 with the vowels and the these. But I've also spent a great deal of time modernizing the daily office, and I've got that as a separate download as well for a printable A5 booklet as a PDF. So that is the exact same daily office that you'll find in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, but it just has that modern language. So check those out. If you don't have a prayer book, then sure, use that. And then another thing I've done, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is I've also got the lectionary that's found in the 1662 Book of Common Prayer, and I've put that into a printable PDF as well. So with the daily office, from now on, we are going to be talking about the 1662 daily office. In my humble opinion, that is the best daily office that you can find. It's the original one. It's the blueprint for everything else. You are going to need three things. First of all, you're going to need the actual liturgy for the daily office, which is found in the prayer book. Second of all, you're going to need a Bible. If you don't have a physical Bible, then get one. Otherwise, you know, there's Bible apps. You know, it's pretty easy to get your hands on a Bible if you have a phone. The other thing you're going to need is what we call the lectionary. Now, the lectionary is essentially a calendar that goes through the year that prescribes Bible readings. Now, again, every province in the Anglican Church usually has its own lectionary. So here in New Zealand, the mainstream Anglican Church has its own lectionary that gets released every year. So every year you've got to buy the new lectionary or it's online for PDF, and that prescribes to you what the readings are going to be when you do the daily office. However, again, we're only talking about the 1662 daily office today. And in that office, we have one lectionary for every single year, which is very handy. You don't have to buy a new lectionary every year. And how it works in the 1662 lectionary is the Old Testament, well, just about all of the Old Testament, there's some things that aren't there, but just about the whole Old Testament is read through every year. The New Testament is read through three times a year, and the entire Psalms, all 150 of the Psalms, are read through every single month. So the 1662 lectionary is definitely asking a lot more of you than most lectionaries are these days, which pale in comparison to that. So if that's quite a lot for you, this can involve quite a lot of Psalms every day, an entire chapter of the Old Testament, and an entire chapter of the New Testament every morning and then every evening. If you're quite busy and that's too much, then look at some other lectionaries that other provinces have. I've used other lectionaries in my life, but 
lately for the last year or so i've been using the 1662 lectionary because i i really like reading scripture and i want to read as much of it as i can so the lectionary for the 1662 prayer book that is linked below check that out and that's what we're going to be going through okay so you've got your three things you've got your prayer book you've got your lectionary and you've got your bible let's go through the liturgy of the daily office and see how to do it First of all, in this video, I'm going to be assuming that you will be doing the daily office by yourself. If you're doing it as a group, it's a lot more simple. The thing is, is that when you're by yourself, there are going to be parts that you should probably not say because they kind of only make sense if you're in a group. First of all, you're going to find a list of these sentences from scripture. So you just read one or two or, or all of them if you want to. These sentences basically just talk about the idea of how we are sinners, but if we confess our sins to God, he will forgive us of our sins. So it's just a little intro to the service. So you read as many of those as you want. Now we come to this part here. This is the exhortation by the leader to pray to God and to confess your sins, but it's very much intended to be said as a group. So this little part here can actually be skipped. Now, as you can see, in my PDF of the office, I've bracketed that section. Anything that's bracketed means that if you're alone, you can skip it if you want. So if you skip that, you then go straight into what's called the confession. So you just read it all out exactly as it's written. You confess your sins. Next up, you have the absolution. Only a priest should be saying this. If there's no priest present, then don't say it. Again, if you're by yourself, you can just skip that part. And then everything else is pretty simple. So you've got the Lord's Prayer, obviously, you just say that. Now, of these parts, there's a few sections in the daily office where you've got a call and response. So here we've got a leader saying, O Lord, open thou our lips. And then everyone else replies, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. If you're by yourself, you just say both those parts. Okay, so you just call and respond to yourself, essentially. You just say it, the whole thing through. Then we come to what's called a song. So in the morning prayer, there's three songs. These are basically just, you don't sing them if you don't want to. You just say them. Some of them are from scripture. Some of them are from tradition. So this one is just simply Psalm 95. You just read it out loud as a song of praise to God. Now we come to the Bible readings. The first reading is always from the Psalms. Now, a book of Psalms is what we call a Psalter. Let's just bear that in mind as the video goes on. So in the 1662 prayer book, we say all 150 Psalms every month. Now, any book of common prayer that you buy, so this version here, for instance, will have the Psalms in them, which is very handy. It's very simple how this works. You open up the Psalms, and let's say we open up to the very beginning of the Psalter. It says day one, morning prayer. And it has the first five psalms. So in the morning office, you're reading Psalm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's, again, there's quite a lot of psalms. The 1662 office does ask quite a lot of you. Other lectionaries, like the New Zealand lectionary, for instance, only ask you to say one psalm for each office, as an example. Now, as you keep flicking through, once you get to Psalm 6, it says day one, evening prayer. So day one is the first day of the month. And evening prayer, of course, that's the evening office. You keep flicking through, then it'll say day two, morning prayer. So that's the second day of the month, morning prayer. It'll have those psalms. You just keep going through the whole Psalter. Now, since some months have 30 days, some have 31, the Psalter is arranged that you say all of the 150 psalms in 30 days. If you're on the 31st day of the month, you actually just repeat the day 30 psalms. Okay, so that's the Psalter. Now, in the PDF I've got linked below of the calendar or the lectionary for the daily office, that includes the Psalms calendar there. So if you don't have a prayer book and you don't know what Psalms you're supposed to say, it's fine. The calendar will include that for you. Okay, now that the Psalms done, you then have the Old Testament reading. It's very simple. If you look at my calendar linked below, it just simply says morning prayer. Lesson one. Lesson one is always from the Old Testament. And then you just have that reading. It's always usually going to be one chapter. Sometimes it's like two chapters if one chapter is very short. So then you read that. 
Then we have the next song of praise. You say that out loud. Once that's done, you then have the second lesson. The second lesson is always from the New Testament. Again, you go to the calendar or you go to the lectionary, and then it simply says lesson two, morning prayer, or if it's if you're in the evening, it's evening prayer. And then you have that lesson and you read that out. Again, it's usually one chapter from the New Testament. Now, another thing that the lectionary notes is what we call feast days. These are particular days in the year where we celebrate saints from history or who are throughout the Bible. Now, most of these feast days don't actually alter anything to do with the readings that you have in the daily office. They are simply noted for you so that you can reflect on those saints and give thanks to God for them in your prayers. However, some saints, very special saints, actually do alter the readings for that day. So you'll see here in the lectionary that on some days, the day is actually in red. That corresponds to the feast day of a particular saint. And on those days, the normal reading that you would have had as you're going through the Bible are replaced by special readings that are sometimes linked to that saint. Once that's done, you've got another song of praise that you read out. Then you have the Apostles' Creed. Again, you read that. Then you have this little bit here where it says, the Lord be with you and the responses and with thy spirit. I recommend that you just don't say that if you're by yourself because it just doesn't make sense to say that to yourself. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Nah, it doesn't make any sense. So you just skip that if you're alone. If you're in a group, of course, then you can say that. The leader should say it and everyone else responds to him. Okay, and then all the rest is self-explanatory. You just say everything else that's there as it's written. Now, some other things to talk about. First of all, the 1662 office is made under the assumption that you live in England and that you're under the British monarch. If you are not under the British monarch, then it's going to be a little bit complicated when it asks you to pray for the queen and for the royal family and that sort of thing. So either you just say it anyway. So even if you're from America and you guys aren't under the monarchy anymore, you just say it anyway for Queen Elizabeth II. Or if you don't want to do that, and if you'd rather pray for your leader, for instance, your president, then in my PDF that I've got linked below, I've actually gone through and edited uh, the office. So there's two versions. Okay, so there's one version that is for, for instance, the royal family. Then under that, I've got a version that I wrote myself, which rather than the royal family, replaces it with parliament or the senate or the supreme court. So you're praying instead for your, your, your government, really. Okay, so that's just, that's an option for you there. Now, the last thing to talk about is this, is how to do the office if you're praying as a group. What I would recommend is, first of all, you appoint a leader. So the leader says the parts that are designated for leader, and then everyone else says the parts that are designated for everyone else, which so just says all in my PDF. Now, when you come to the, to the songs, the songs that you read out, I would recommend that you either say them all together as a group or the leader, for instance, could appoint someone to say each one. So you say, OK, Stacy, can you say uh, this first song? And then Clive, can you say this second song? So you get each each person sort of has a turn to have one part where they do themselves. Sometimes people like that. When it comes to the Bible readings, again, you could read them all together in your head or you could read them all out loud together. I wouldn't recommend that though, because again, this is a whole chapter of scripture we're talking about. So I'd recommend that you nominate an individual to read each part. So you just say, okay, John, can you read the uh, first lesson from the Old Testament? And Lucy, can you read the second lesson from the New Testament as an example? Then when it comes to the Psalms, you've got options as well. Everyone can read the Psalms out together. That's what I'd recommend. Psalms are supposed to be said together. Or again, you just nominate one person to do each one. Again, if you're by yourself, though, you're doing all of this yourself. Now, let's talk about some tips that I would give you for doing the office. First of all, this is very important. The daily office was made for man, not man, for the daily office. Don't turn the daily office into a legalistic rule, a hoop that you have to jump through. Very often, I found that when people start getting into the habit of doing the daily office, they can turn it into a law. Maybe they do the daily office every day for a couple of weeks, and that's great. Then they have a bad week, 
they don't do their daily office a few days. They can end up getting a bit depressed about that and they can start thinking, God doesn't love me anymore. God's very cross with me. They didn't pray to him, etc. Don't do that. Remember, as Anglicans, we believe in justification by faith alone. You just do the office the next day. It starts with a confession of sins. You're, you're just, you're back. It's fine. God loves you. God doesn't create these hoops for you to jump through in order for you to be saved. He saves you because he loves you. He poured a spirit into your hearts, which allowed you supernaturally to come to faith in him. Because of that faith, he loves you and you will be saved. So don't turn the daily office into a law. Don't turn it into something that you have to perform in order to be saved. Okay, so let's get that out of the way first. However, in Christianity, there's always a flip side. That being said, I would recommend that you be strict with yourself about doing the daily office because what I found in my life is that if you do the office twice a day, every day, your relationship with God, your spirituality, your moral life, your understanding of scripture, everything is going to be noticeably better. Okay, the more time you spend in prayer, the more time you spend reading the Bible, the more your heart is going to grow in its love for God. So do be strict with yourself. Okay, but just don't be strict with yourself and think that your strictness that you've sort of imposed on yourself is God's strictness that he's imposing on you, if that makes sense. So so for myself, if I have a day where I don't do the daily office at all that day, I can be a bit cross with myself and say, oh, that was a bit slack of me, but I'm not going to go and think God's cross of me and God's thinking that slack of me. Okay. Well, maybe he is, but again, God's very, very forgiving as the opening of the daily office shows. Now, another tip, this sort of goes without saying, when you do the office, make sure that you are in a nice sort of environment, you're not in a crowded room, there's not distractions, maybe don't do it if there's like a computer or a television on or around, do it somewhere private. I, for instance, do it in my prayer corner in my study. Sometimes I do it in my bed when I just wake up or if I'm just about to go to sleep. So just a nice environment where you can focus, maybe a room that's not too messy because a messy room always distracts us and kind of depresses us a little bit. So a nice tidy room, you're by yourself. I would recommend you do that. Now next, go through the daily office slowly. Don't rush through it. When you rush through it, I guarantee you, you are going to stop thinking about what you're saying. You're just going to start saying it on autopilot. And that can be quite frustrating because you're going through the Psalms, you finish it, and you just think, you know, what did I even just read? I, I kind of just said it out loud and I wasn't even thinking about any of it. That can be annoying. So just do go through it slowly. Do actually think about what you're saying. If you do have a time, and you will, where you're reading through something and you're just on autopilot for a moment, you can just stop and do it again. Okay, so if you just read through a psalm and then you think, hold on a minute, what did I just say? Just do it again if you want to, if you've got the time for that, okay? Because the daily office is is intended for you to be enriched, okay, in your understanding of scripture. If you're just saying it out loud, it's not really doing anything for you, so do it again. Another tip I give you, if you're not in the mood for prayer, if you're just depressed, if you're feeling really down on yourself, if you think that, if you if you hate yourself that morning, right? Or if you're feeling quite distant from God, do the daily office anyway. Just just do it. And this is one of the great gifts of the daily office being prescribed, of it being a liturgy. Because I often find if I'm a bit depressed, if I'm a bit down, if I'm feeling quite distant from God, it's very hard for me to pray using my own words. Okay, I just, I just can't find the words. With the daily office, you don't need to find the words. It gives you the words and you can just say it. I guarantee you, if you just force yourself to do the office, within a few minutes, you'll feel okay again, and you'll be back in the mood, and you'll be feeling much, much better. So even if you're not in the mood, just do it. Don't say, I'm not in the mood to pray today, so I'm not going to pray. If you're not in the mood to pray, that's all the more reason for you to pray, because prayer heals us. It heals our hearts. It heals our souls. It helps us get closer to God. So that's all the tips I can really think about. Again, there's going to be some more videos on this channel that are going to talk about the daily office because it is such an important part of Anglicanism. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you. Now remember, 
down below we've got these PDFs. You've got a PDF of the original language daily office. You've got a PDF of the modernized language office. And you've got a PDF of the lectionary, the calendar that prescribes the readings to you. If that calendar is a bit too much for you, if the idea of doing, for instance, five Psalms on the morning of the first day of the month and a whole chapter of the Old Testament and a whole chapter of the New Testament is a bit daunting, that's fine. Check out some other lectionaries depending on where you are. So if you're in New Zealand, maybe look at the New Zealand lectionary. If you're in America, maybe check out the ACNA lectionary, which is also linked below. There's a great site that has an interactive lectionary that you sort of click on and it shows you the readings for that day. Also, the ACNA has a dedicated website to the daily office as well. You click on that day of the month. It opens up the office, but also includes the Bible readings in that same uh, page. You don't even have to go to a separate app or a separate Bible for the readings. It's all there together. That's quite a cool app that's linked below as well. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. Stay tuned for some more videos about the daily office and God bless.